All right, welcome back, everybody, to Daily Math Concepts. What we're going to be looking at today is simply uh, a mini crash course on functions. The first question that we have here says that given that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, I'm right here, and g of x is equal to x minus 1 over 2x plus 3, that's where I'm at. Evaluate f of negative 3 and 2, which is b, g of 3. All right, when we're evaluating functions, the basic idea is about substitution. So it means then that for this first question here, we're going to actually take up the f function. So we need to write the f function. It says, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. We're going to take the f function, and we're going to substitute negative 3 in the f function, wherever x is. So here's the question. We need to find the value for f of negative 3. It simply means then we're going to put negative 3 where the x is, and everything remains the same. As you could see right here, we're looking at negative 3 right there. And it did play, took the place of the x. Now, remember, though, that we have to carry out the, the principles that was actually happening before. For example, 2x really means 2 times x, which means that we'll have 2 times negative 3, which will give us negative 6. When we add 1 to that, we will get negative 5. What this really means is that when you evaluate f of negative 3, which means to substitute negative 3 in the f function, the answer would be negative 5. So that is how you evaluate those. Now let's look on the second question. The second question asks us to evaluate g of 3. Therefore, we're going to take the g function. It says g of x is equal to x minus 1 all over 2x plus 3. In evaluating g of 3, what we're going to do is to substitute 3 in the g function wherever x is. For example, 3, then there's a minus 1 over 2 times x, which will become 2 times 3, and then we add 3. From here on, we take our time making sure we're not making any errors. 3 minus 1, that's 2, all over 6 plus 3. Finally, this becomes 2 over 9. It simply means that g of 3 would give us 2 over 9. So there it is. When you're evaluating functions, that's all you have to do is to substitute. All right. In this piece, what we're looking at is question two. And question two is saying that for what value of x is number one, which is a f of x equals seven. And the second piece, g of x equals zero. Let's focus on the first one. We want to know what value could x be such that when you work it out in the f function here, our response will be a 7. So then the thing is, we are saying that what value could I put in that function? So let us take a look here. This is saying that f of x is equal to 7. What is f of x? f of x is actually 2x plus 1. So then it simply means that we're going to put 2x plus 1 equal to 7. Because this question is saying that, listen, what value could I put in the f function so that it works itself out to give me a 7? The f function is actually 2x plus 1. So we simply replace the 2x plus 1 for the f function and set it to equal to 7. At this moment, we're going to be solving for x. So we're going to be solving for x. And we apply ourselves ordinarily. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. Rewriting this, we have 2x, which is now equal to 6. 
And then we're going to divide both sides by 2. And then 2 into itself, 1, 2 into the 6, 3. X is equal to 3. What this is suggesting is that if I should substitute 3 here and then work out everything, I will get 7. And that's what that question really means. So x is equal to 3, such that if we substitute 3 in the f function, we will get 7. Let's move on to the next piece. All right, so the next piece here says that we want to know what value of x is g of x equal 0. Well, another interpretation could be what values could I substitute here, right here, in the g function, such that when I'm finished, I will get a zero. A very simple way of approaching a question like this is to set the g function to equal to zero. The g function is as follows. x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. Let this equal to zero. So when that is equal to zero, the only thing that we have to do now is that we're going to be solving. So in solving this, we're going to multiply both sides by 2x plus 3 and get rid of that denominator. So we're going to multiply the, the left side by 2x plus 3 and the right side by 2x plus 3. You could put a bracket around these if you want. But definitely, on the left side, 2x plus 3 would have cancelled itself. So we are now left with x minus 1 is equal to 0. Remember, though, the zero product rule, that anything multiplied by a 0 will give you a 0. Hence, this is a 0. From here, we're still solving. I'm going to be adding 1 to both sides. Finally, x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, then g of x will be equal to 0. Now, given that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and g of x is equal to x minus 1 all over 2x plus 3, for what value of x is g of x undefined? In other words, what value could we put here and there. And when we're done, and we will not be able to get a value out. Remember, though, that whenever we're being asked a question like this, it's going to be a rational function with a fraction, which means that what concept of a fraction cannot be equal to zero is what we focus on. A fraction, remember, though, that a fraction is written as A over B, where B cannot be equal to zero. That is embarking on the, the idea that your denominator cannot be a zero. Now, that is the concept that we're going to be focusing on here. It doesn't matter what number is at the top, but our denominator cannot be equal to zero. If our denominator is a zero, our function becomes undefined. Therefore, we're going to set the denominator to equal to zero and solve for x. Here goes. In this case, we're looking at 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. That is setting the denominator to 0. And from here, we want to solve. So we'll minus 3 from both sides. 2x is now equal to negative 3. Let us divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2. This is suggesting that if x is equal to negative 3 over 2, then the g function will be undefined. It won't be possible. That means we will get a 0 at the denominator, which means that your calculator will not be able to give you a value. Now let's look at another question. We want to express g of f of x, then f of g of x. This idea is actually called a composite function. What a composite function is, is when a function goes into another function. 
Now, in this case, we're going to be looking at it like a host and a visitor situation where the first function being written will be seen as the host function. And the second function that is written, which is the one at the back, will be viewed as a visitor. So if we view it like that, then the F function will take itself and go sit in the G function for the first one. But for the last one here around the back, the F function will be the host and the G function will be the visitor in that case. So let us start off with the first question. This one right here. So we'll start off by writing the, the host function <clears throat> which is the G function. So the G function says x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the F function in the G function. So it is written as G of F of x, which means that the F function will go wherever the x is. The F function will go wherever the X is. There it is. So if you look carefully, you will see that the F function just took the place of the X in the G function. That's fine. So as soon as the function gets there, we will have to now express the things for what they are. For example, let's continue working here. We need to unfold the f function which is 2x plus 1 and then there was always a minus 1 at the back all of this is going to over 2 open bracket 2x plus 1 and then there's a plus 3 at the back as you could see i am simply replacing the x with the f function and then we're going to simplify the idea so let's simplify the idea so in this case, what I'm looking at now is 2x at the top because a plus 1 and a minus 1 becomes 0. All of this is over. And I'm going to distribute right here. I'm going to distribute 2 inside my bracket there. So I'm looking at 4x plus 2 over 2x. And then there is a plus 3. My final response is a 2x at the top over 4x, and then a plus 5. So g of f of x is 2x all over 4x plus 5. All right, so that's our first composite function, where a function goes into the other function. Let us now look at the next one. So the next one that we're going to be looking at, as you could see, it is red the f of g of x, which means that I'm going to be writing my f function first. It's the host. And it is 2x plus 1. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to now write the question f of g of x, which means that the g function will now take the place of the x in the f function. So you could see I'm putting the g function at that spot right there. Then we're going to represent the g function for what we know it is. So we'll have a 2 there. What is the g function? The g function is actually, I'm going to introduce a bracket there, x minus 1 all over 2x plus 3. And then there is a plus 1 at the back. To let this it seems a little bit more understandable, I'm going to put 1 over 1 to, to highlight the fact that now we're going to have to do some algebra fraction because we're seeing that we have a fraction with a whole number 1. We're going to represent it like a fraction so we could feel a little bit more comfortable going forward. Now, what we want to do, though, right at this moment is that we want to clear up what we have right here at the top. So I'm going to distribute this 2 inside, right? So we're going to distribute the 2 inside. So then 2 times x is going to give me 2x 
2 times negative 1 will give me negative 2. And this is going to be over 2x plus 3. And then I'm adding 1. So basically, I'm going to be working my algebra fraction. My denominator or my LCM should be, it's going to be 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 into itself is 1 times. 1 will multiply by that will give me the same thing at the top there. 2x minus 2. 1 into anything will give about that thing. So 1 into 2x plus 3 will be 2x plus 3. So that 2x plus 3 will now be used to multiply by 1, and it will give me 2x plus 3. As you can see, we're almost done. We need to simplify what we have at the top. I have a positive 2x and a positive 2x becomes 4x at the top. A negative 2 and a positive 3 will give me positive 1. And all of this is over 2x plus 3. Therefore, we could conclude that f of g of x is equal to 4x plus 1 over 2x plus 3. All right, so right now, as you can see, what we're about to do is that we want to um, do some evaluation of some composite function. It says um, we want to evaluate g of f of 2, and we want to do f of g of 1. Now, if you notice, I brought back this and this uh, from the previous questions that we just did at number 4, where we found um, f, we found the f of g of x and the g of f of x, right? Now, because these, this function here, this idea here is linked to the g of the f of x, I am going to use this function to evaluate that. If you do notice that there is only one difference where we are putting in the 2 where the x is. So basically, this function can be used. So if I have the g of the f of x, I can utilize it to evaluate the g of the f of the 2. All right? So let us look at this right now. So basically, I'm going to do g of f of 2 because I have the expression for the function. So it's 2 times 2 at the top over 4 times 2 plus 5. I am just substituting number 2 in the g of the f of x function. Right, So there you could see, if we go further, we're looking at two twos, that's four at the top, over four, four twos, eight plus five, that's 13. So, so, we, so, so in other words, then, we're saying that G of F of two is actually four over 13. Now, let us look at doing this another way. We actually can find uh, G of F of two by approaching it this way, we're going to go backwards. So we're going to evaluate f of 2 first. And anything that I get out, I'm going to plug that into the g function. So we're going to evaluate f of 2. And then the response that we get out, we plug it into the g function. So let us see. We should get the same answer, thirteen over um, 4 over 13. So let us start by evaluating f of 2. So f of 2 is that I'm going to be putting 2 where the x is. So it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus, plus 1. That's 5. So f of 2 is 5. What that is suggesting here is that I am literally finding g of 5 because f of 2 has a value of 5. So now I'm going to plug in five in my g function. So I'm going to plug in that five in my g function. Now I'm going to be substituting five there and five there. Let's see. Let's go. We're talking about five minus one over two times five plus three. So there it is. Five minus one is four over Two fives here give us 10 plus 2, 13. So we, we end up getting the same response. So we're suggesting that you can evaluate these two ways. If you have the expression for the idea, you could substitute, or you could work it backwards by taking two steps, basically what we did here. Let's look at the second question. It wants us to evaluate 
f of g of y. Now, I have the function for f of g of x, which means all I have to do right now is to put 1 right there, there. So when we put the 1 in that function, then basically it's going to give us the value now. So let us evaluate that. So we're going for f of g of 1. So it's going to be 4 times 1 plus 1 all over 2 times 1 plus 3. Let's go further and take a look. We're looking at 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1. That's 5. And then this is going to be 2 ones 2 plus 1 plus 3. That's 5 over 5. And that's going to give us a value of 1. All right, so technically the answer we're looking for is 1 for f of g of 1. It's going to give us 1. All right, now another way we could have done this, we're doing f of g of 1. So basically then we're going to take the 1 and we're going to put the 1 in the g function. And whatever we get out, we're going to bring it towards the f function. So when we are done, we're going to get a value for this, and we're going to take that value and plug it into the f function. So let's do g of 1 now. g of 1 is going to equal to 1 minus 1 over 2 times 1 plus 3. And that is going to give me 0 over 5, which is 0. So g of 1 is 0. So because g of 1 is 0, 0 is going to be for this here. So basically, in the f function that says f of x is equal to 2x plus 1, I'm going to now put in 0 in the f function. 2 times 0 plus 1, and that's going to give me 1. So definitely you're seeing that we got back one for the final answer because we're suggesting here that f of g of one is one because you could see that we got oh All right, which is the same thing as what we got when we did it in the beginning right here, right? What we're going to do, we're going to say let's let y equal to f of x, all right? Such that, such that y is equal to 2x plus 1. So I'm going to be working on the f function. So I'm saying let y is equal to f of x such that I could say y is equal to 2x plus 1. So now, whenever you're doing the inverse, you switch x and y and transpose for the new y. So at this moment, we're going to switch x and y. So x is now equal to 2y plus 1. And then we're going to transpose for the new y. So in transposing, you could see that we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we'll have x minus 1, and this is now equal to 2y. Remember, though, that we're trying to uh, find a value for, or find an expression for y. So we're going to divide by 2. There we go, divide this by 2. The final response is that x minus 1 over 2 is equal to y. Therefore, the conclusion is that the inverse of f of x is equal to x minus 1 over 2. And that is the inverse of f of x, right? So we simply take a two-step process. We switch x and y, transpose for the new y. Let's go for the g function we can now write y here. So we're going to say let y equal to x minus 1 over 2x plus 3. Let us switch x and y. So x is now equal to y minus 1 over 2y plus 3. We want to transpose to find an expression for the new y. Well, we have a fraction. We're going to multiply both sides by 2y plus 3. Balance the equation, 2y plus 3. On the right side, 2y plus 3 would cancel itself. But on the left side, we need to distribute the x inside so that we could remove that bracket on the left side. 
what are we looking at? We're actually looking at 2xy plus 3x, and that is equal to y minus 1. Remember, though, that we're transposing for the new y. That means we need to gather the y's together. In an effort to do that, this positive 3y must be subtracted from both sides. Basically, then, we could bring it across, change the sign. This positive y must be subtracted from both sides. At the end, it means that we could just say we bring it across and change the sign. So let us continue. So in this effort of rearranging and organizing, 2xy minus y, because we'd have to minus y, balance by minusing y, would have to minus 3x. You could see the minus 3x. That's the real principle. So we minus the y from both sides. That is equal to negative 1, and then there's going to be a minus 3x over here. As you could see, it would appear as if we brought this across and changed the sign, as well as it would appear as if we brought this across and changed the sign. The principle is we subtracted both and balanced the equation, both sides. Finally, I need y. I'm going to factorize out y. So y over bracket 2x, because y into 2x, y will give 2x, and y into negative y will give us negative 1. And then we're left with negative 1 minus 3x. Then we could divide both sides by 2x minus 1, dividing by 2x minus 1. Let us look at what we have here, the final analysis. Final analysis, it could be said that y is equal to minus 1 minus 3x over 2x minus 1. Therefore, I could say the inverse of g of x is equal to negative 1, negative 3x. All of this is over 2x minus 1. There. Now, for the final piece, you could see here that we're actually dealing with plugging in a value in those inverse functions. So the f1, let's go for that now. All right. So the inverse of x, f of x was actually x minus 1 over 2. So if I'm asked to find the inverse of f of 3, then I'm going to be putting 3 where the x is. Here it is. It simply means that 3 will go where the x is. And then you work the math out. This is going to equal to 2 over 2. And it's going to give me a 1. So then the inverse of f of 3 is 1. That's that. Let's go for the next one. So if I, if I need to find uh, the inverse of g of 4, then let's go. I am going to be putting the 4 where the x is. And this is now equal to negative 1, negative 12, over 8, minus 1. All right? So we're looking at ideas, trying not to make any error or anything. Finally, you're looking at negative 13 over 7. And that's the answer. G, the inverse of G of 4 is negative 13 over 7. And there you have it, just a, a crash course on a lot of questions that you could do in functions. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment at Delimath Concepts. See you next time.